This is the Zotac ER5 1060. It's a pretty interesting small form factor gaming desktop with a Ryzen 5 1400 and a GTX 1060 3GB. These are pretty interesting specs and it's a pretty small size as well so let's take a look at it. So starting off with a tour of the device, on the top you have a mesh surface which is great for airflow here. There's a lot of airflow available which is really nice. On the front you have a power button which illuminates orange and is fairly similar to a lot of the other Z-boxes we've seen in the past. You also have a full-size SD card reader, a Type-C and standard USB 3.1 ports, and headphone and microphone jacks. On the back you have two wireless antennas, two gigabit ethernets, as well as DC in and four USB 3 ports. You also have the full suite of I.O. including a DVI ports, uh, three display ports and one HDMI ports. On the left hand side you have a fan grill for the 92mm fan behind it, and otherwise that is pretty much it aesthetically. Now this is a bare bones system which does mean that you need to install your own SSD or hard drive and RAM so bear that in mind when you're looking at the price of this device but uh, to install that you basically take off the four uh, feet which are effectively thumb screws as well remove the bottom plate and it's very easy to install the RAM and SSD and hard drive from there. The device supports DDR4 in two SODIMM slots and an M.2 as well as a two and a half inch drive so you basically pick whatever you fancy obviously you will need to add some RAM and some hard drives but uh, you can do any configuration or load it all up if you want. So you can fully disassemble this system if you want and I actually went about doing it here. There are a lot of screws to get this thing apart. I think there's probably uh, 30 or so screws to even get the outer shell off but once you do you'll see that the 1060 which is a 3 gig model by the way bear that in mind is uh, a full size or an ITX but standard desktop card. They've done some slight modifications to the rear back plate but nothing that you shouldn't be able to modify yourself easy enough or just put your own in so if you did want to upgrade this in the future it's a full PCI X16 slot so you can do that and as long as you only need a single 8 pin you have op options for upgradability. When it comes to the CPU they're, they're using a custom sort of blower style design cooler and they're using a standard socketed 1400 Ryzen chip which is really nice to see especially in a pre-built system but otherwise it's fairly hard to access a lot of the other stuff that's in there so just bear that in mind if you do want to try and upgrade anything else or even just upgrade the CPU later date. Comparing the internals of this to the EN 1060 which is the Intel version of this, the EN 1060 is a lot lot smaller, a lot thinner, a lot more low profile and while I understand that they're using MXM module graphics cards for that system versus a full size ITX chassis style card for this one, uh, it would be really nice to see that smaller style as it's the same sort of width and length effectively with a just different height and it'd be nice to see that uh, kind of option available. With that said though, the temperatures for the system were actually really impressive. The GPU and the CPU maxed out at 84 degrees Celsius under gaming load, which is really pretty impressive considering how quiet it was as well. I was really impressed with that. Now of course this wouldn't be a system review without some benchmarks, so let's take a look. Starting off with 3D Mark Fire Strike, as you can see the scores are not too bad here. It's a 1063 gig, so it's not going to be blowing away 4K uh, especially, but uh, you can handle 1080p and 4040p on ultra to high settings just fine. Dirt Rally is a perfect point of this of 85 and 62 FPS respectively with some pretty decent minimums of 66 and 49 respectively as well and on GTA 5 you're looking at 102 and 80 with uh, 60 and 35 for the minimum so again very impressive and very playable numbers here so that's obviously very nice to see. In Unigen Heaven you're looking at 91 and 54 FPS average here and obviously these are all on uh, either very high or ultra settings so that's really nice to see and very uh, very playable numbers here. So as you saw the system is very well performing especially at 1080p and even 1440p. It is a 1063 gig which means it has less CUDA cores than the 1066 gig but as I said because this is a semi upgradable system you can get in there and upgrade it to a newer card if you fancy. It does also look like a fairly decent price for the the system. It's around about £700 at the time of filming in the UK, but of course uh, there, this is obviously a bare bones system so you will need to add, if you want 8 gigs, almost £100 at the time of filming for 8 gigs of DDR4 and then your SSD you're looking at probably another £100 or so depending on what model you go for and if you want a hard drive on top of that it can, comes to near enough a £1000. Comparing that to a system that you would entirely build yourself, well obviously you won't have the benefit of the size that the chassis has, you will obviously see better benefits in stuff like connectivity for the rear IO, although you may not see dual gigabit ethernet and Wi-Fi, but nonetheless you'll also see price differences because uh, 
the early 2018 uh, build guide that I did pretty recently showcased a system which had a 1600, not a 1400, and had a 1066 gig for after the price of RAM and hard drives for this sort of system, basically the same price. So with a, a fully built system, you would end up with effectively a slightly better overall machine while obviously it's, uh, still you know losing out on, for, for example, the space aspect. Now, before we jump into the scoring, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this sort of system, the small form factor style, something you're interested in? And is the price trade-off for this versus a pre-built sort of full size or even mid-tower chassis, is that worth it for you? Let me know in the comments down below. Below. So with that said, jumping into the scoring here, starting with value for money, this is going to be a 3.5. It's decent, but not the best in the world, so just bear that in mind, and especially because it is bare bones, keep that in mind if you are planning on buying this. When it comes to performance, it did a pretty decent job, and it's going to be a 4.5, and in terms of functionality, I'm going to go with a 4.5 as well. In terms of the styling, it's pretty nice, it's actually a nice subtle aesthetic, there's no flashy RGB lights, so it's going to be a 4.5 as well, and in terms of touching BB score, it's going to be a 4.5 and a gold award. It's a really impressive machine. They've done a really good job of temperature management in here, upgradability, and obviously the fact that it's a bare bones solution means you can add whatever you fancy. So that's also pretty nice. IO is really good as well, and yeah, just really pretty impressive. If you want to know any more about the system, take a look at the top link in the description down below. That will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this. And of course, if you are new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. If you want to support the channel, help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis, then take a look at the Patreon and Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below, which all massively help out. You can also check out the new merch, which is awesome and really comfy and uh, yeah and that, that's pretty much it there's some other videos over here for you to take a look at and otherwise we'll see you all in the next video